Listeners, welcome back. It's our final... Pre- I'm a bit sad about it, boys. Our final preview show before the Premier League kicks off this Friday. And we're talking about the newly promoted sides. Newcastle, Brighton and Huddersfield reached the promised land at the back end of last season. And uh, we're going to talk about them here today. I am joined, as ever, without Proudy, not here again. But Jack is with me. How are you doing, Jack? I'm delighted. I'm excited about all about Rafa. Oh, yeah. Good. I've well, missed well, him in the Premier for, League. I for Newcastle like, business, uh, yeah, we'll come I, to I you. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm also joined by the ever lovable, some people's favourite, Callum Keane. Most people's favourite, I would some say. Some people's. We'll keep it with some people's. Um, we'll, do a, we'll do a poll about that halfway through the season when things are things are getting a bit sad amongst us all. Uh, right, though, let's kick things off. Jack, you wanted to start with Newcastle on your, well, by Jove, will we? Uh, Christian Atsu signed, as has, how do you say that, Jack? You're, you're a connoisseur of French names. It's Florian Lejeune. Lejeune. Sounds Lejeune. good. I'm going to Lejeune. Lejeune today. It sounds like you're doing an M&S advert with these pronunciations. Uh, he's signed for 8.7 million. Javier Menquilo has made the switch across the North East. He's gone to, uh, to, well, actually, to be fair, he's signed for Newcastle. He was on loan at Sunday last year. And I Jack... I like his name. I, uh, sorry, just, uh, it translates, I, I've just noticed this, it translates as, as Florian the Young. So, oh, what, Le, Lejeune? Go. Lejeune. 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 Up Lejeune. Yeah. yeah, work on that. Uh, but no, Jack, they've also bought Jacob Murphy in. From Norwich. Who we, I, st- I still there. don't understand that transfer for that much money. But at million. least you've got the other one. So it's a lot, I, isn't it? I think Josh Murphy's the better brother, but Jacob has played more first team football yeah, over the last two years. I think he was looking for a long time, like uh, like Josh was going to be better, but Jacob seems to have leapfrogged him. I mean, are we and sure that-, that Newcastle bought the right twin? <laughs> Well, well if, he can, if he can't he play could, one he week, s- they can just do the quick... I've seen Freaky Friday. They can just do a little switcheroo, can't they? Atsu had been on loan there last year as well, so that's a, a kind of returning sign. We don't, see, we don't see enough sort of twins messing around in football, do we? I feel like we need to see a bit more conniving displays from well, footballers. Raf- Raphael and Fabio could have done, but uh, they had oh, two I've, I've known that they did, Keno. Just yeah. think, though, realistically, into, now, this, I'm not saying teams should do this and I'm just putting out there as a suggestion drugs test right how easy would that be to avoid you just give one of the twins you, you give it so he's the fastest player on earth and, and then you'd wh- think like you know as well the kind of the, the the WADA or the sort of UK anti-doping officials they might not be that much yeah. of a follower of football they probably wouldn't be able to instantly tell whether very it's good Fabio point very good point they're scientists they're not football fans they're not in the ultras are they is it not so going to be odd when in... you've got identical twins and one of them's ripped as fuck and the other's just like <laughs> scrawny yeah but you never send him in do you you always, you always send in the one that's not ripped as Jack put it ripped as fuck everyone so I apologise for his language but there we go you just send in the other one it could uh, work. You thought this through. Of, well, I'm just saying. A lot of outs just, for Newcastle. Yeah, lots lot of, of outs. Uh, Thorvin, 9.5 million. My good God. That's, Thorvan. They've done well. Thorvan, is it? They've done well, regardless. Uh, Harris Vukic. Now, Jack, he was rumoured to be good for ages, wasn't he? But never, that's obviously not happened for him. He's gone to 20. Uh, Anita's gone to Leeds. Decent little signing, I think, that for Leeds. I must say. Well, they've lost Charlie Taylor, haven't they? Yeah, but Anita's not a left back. Well, he has played full back in his career. Right, but that's yeah. not what that literally isn't the point I'm making, is it? He's not a left back. Anyway, Jack won't let that rest. Quick, move on. Sami amiobi has gone to Bolton on a free. Uh, Gofran's gone to a Turkish side. You don't really see French players going to play in Turkey, but they usually, there's one there. Uh, <laughs> and Daryl Murphy has gone to Nottingham Forest. Lewis Gibson's also gone to Everton for six million. Sorry, Jack, if you were to the last show, listeners, that makes little sense. But Savage. I'll be honest, Jack, it's just come off, and I can't believe it either. Uh, Matt Sells has gone out on loan to Anderlecht, uh, interestingly, as well. But Jack Newcastle, you want to talk about Rafa. And do you think this squad has got enough to survive the Premier League? It's not that dissimilar from the one that came down. It's not, which is, a, I'd be a little bit concerned. If Matt right. Ritchie's there now, though. Obviously, he signed last year and got promoted. They topped the championship, but are they good enough? Um, I feel like Newcastle as a club, out of all these teams that are going up, you know, kind of slagged off the other two teams, but they are a team that... We'll get to that. I feel like for the other two teams coming up, there isn't necessarily, and there's a hope that they stay up, but there isn't that expectation. Whereas I feel like for Newcastle, they are a team yes. that everyone yes. expects to be in the Premier League. I think for them this year, anything above kind of 14th, 13th place would be considered a great season in reality. Because I think the Premier League is a lot more competitive than it has been. They're obviously coming in to a league where, yes, they've spent, you know, almost £30 million, but you look at Huddersfield, who have only just come up with them, they're spending similar sums of money. It's It's been a little bit mad in that regard. I feel like the issue is in Newcastle, as we've seen through mismanagement before them, struggle in the Premier League. 
Obviously, Ashley is still at the reins. I feel like Rafa's a great manager and I think he'll probably get the most out of them. But I, I, I think they've got enough about them. So you, th- so you think they'll stay up? I think they'll stay up quite comfortably. I think they can well, get... Well, in, in which case then, Jack, and this is, this is a question I think you need to answer, is we, talk, we look at the sides that are already in the Premier League. Which teams do you think, and I think that's probably, that's probably one obvious one if you listen to our last show, but who, which teams are they better than? Which, which teams are they comfortably better than? Oh, what if we're just looking at the league table as a whole? In terms, in terms of squads that are currently in the Premier League, and then you compare the Newcastle one. Of course, take the managers into account as well. You might think Rafa Benitez is a better manager than Sean Dyche, for example. So, so who are they better than? Where, where do you think they'll finish based on this? Uh, I think they could do really well. Actually, I think they'll come thirteenth or fourteenth. I'll go fourteenth. Fourteenth. So you think there's there's currently four teams in the Prem or three teams in the Prem that you think they're they're already better than? No, four teams. Sorry, yeah, four teams that they're better than. Yeah. Name them. Uh, we'll go with first and foremost. <laughs> we'll go with West, we'll West Brom. West, West Brom. Brom are going to struggle this year. Okay. Uh, Burnley. Okay. Swansea. Yep. And this is fascinating. I hate to say it, I think Bournemouth as well. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not overly sold on Bournemouth. I'm not on the Bournemouth <laughs> hype train. I'm sorry. It's for, no, it's, it's it's fair. To to be fair, I would have had Newcastle as better. Um, better than both the two sides that they've come up with better than Burnley and obviously a better manager than most teams in the bottom half as well in Benitez also a better squad than Swansea's and now Jack's mentioned it may be a West Brom as well if they don't perform very well this year so uh, uh, you only need to be um, because obviously um, retaining their Premier League status will be the goal regardless of how big the expectations are they'll just want to stay in the league and so I think they do have enough to do that this year it might not be um, a, you know I remember when they came up after being relegated last time was it under Pardew the first time maybe I think it possibly was and they suddenly shot back into like the top eight I don't think it'll happen like that this time my, my only, have, my only question I'm not as a Liverpool fan I've got mixed feelings between uh, for Rafa but what I will say is that I don't know how good he is if Newcastle are in a relegation dogfight. When he remember he joined in March when he took over, he had a couple of months plus to keep Newcastle in the division when they were first when they were in the Premier League two years ago, and didn't do it. Like they weren't ever really looking like they could even stay up under Benitez. Now, if Newcastle find themselves in a relegation fight at all, I don't think their squad is that much better than some of the teams you've mentioned, like like Bournemouth, for example. I think. There's, no, I don't think it's better than Bournemouth. There's not much. There's not much between them. I'd, I'd argue to say Swansea even. I've got players like Guilford Sigurdsson that are game changing players that Newcastle, frankly, I don't necessarily think have. Um, Burnley, I probably would give you, but Benitez has never shown that he's a manager capable of getting a side out of a difficult situation. And no, but I think this situation he finds himself in is very different to coming in at March with a. A squad that he doesn't know, but, it, but it's who are not already a... heading towards relegation. He he brought them up it, as champions of the championship. He's had that most of that team for a full season. He's had a full pre season here and is going presumably into the league and the season this year, aiming at you know as Jack said, fourteenth and above. We see a lot of managers, you know, take teams up. Maybe they come top of the division and then they get there. I'm, th- I'm thinking of teams that have done it sort of in not too recent memory. Sort of Norwich have done, have done a similar thing. You've seen, um, let me think of another really good example of, of a team that did it. Reading have done it in, in the not too distant past. These teams that come up and they fly through divisions and they get to the top of the table and all of a sudden they're in a relegation dogfight. They're not winning week in, week out. And the players' mentality changes. And, and that happens with teams, not just the size of Newcastle, but many teams that come up from the division and can never quite sustain consistent form at that lower end of the Premier League t- table, when you might go on a run where in four games you play Spurs, Liverpool and Manchester United back-to-back and you're losing every single one and it's hard to take positives from those games. <laughs> as good as a manager Benitez is, he's always taken good teams and made them better. Newcastle in this division aren't a good team. They're going to be I they're going to be fighting really hard to stay up. I think the difference between the teams that you mentioned that have done this in the past and Newcastle is that they've ne- none of those teams have had a manager with the experience in the league that Benitez does. There's one factor that um, Benitez will be definitely be able to massively use in this advantage um, this year, and that is sort of knowing how to consistently beat teams in that bottom half of the table because as Liverpool manager and as Chelsea manager, of course, he would always have been expected to get results against those teams. And yes, the personnel he has at his disposal this year won't be as good as a team that he had maybe either of those teams at Mm. all. But um, I think 
in, in, at the point in this league where the margins between relegation and, and finishing ninth or tenth are so tight, often you know three to six points, um, Benita, the Benitez factor will be enough to keep Newcastle firmly away from relegation. Yeah. I, I don't think they'll set the world. I, 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 come to, I come to you just a moment, Jack. I will say when Benitez did take over, the back end of the season when he was there wasn't dreadful it was it was a little too little too late that sort of scenario I don't think you can base that on anything I mean though. he was on beating these last six he won three and drew three yeah. against, some, against some decent I mean he beat Swansea he beat Palace and beat Spurs you remember on the last day of the season 5-1 but there was a draw against Villa in there a defeat to Norwich and Villa were dreadful Callum you'll remember Villa, were, Villa were... They'll pick up, Newcastle will pick up results against the teams around them and that's enough to keep you in the league invariably yeah I, I don't I think I agree that they'll stay up just, just to clarify I don't think they will get relegated I just I wonder if they go on a, a difficult run, if there's enough good players in the side, Jack. Well, that's the thing I was going to say. I mean, you, you talked about the likes of Reading and Norwich who have kind of come up comfortably before or won the league handsomely and then struggled. But the difference is this is a Newcastle United side that really has Premier League quality in it. And I think on top of that, Newcastle United is a football club with a lot of infrastructure and pull so the likes of Reading and Norwich really didn't have in that same situation. You kind of look at the players they've brought in. I think they've spent fairly well, but at the same time, they've kind of put big outlays out there. Uh, I think for me, the big worry for Newcastle is actually the strike force. Obviously, they had a top goal scorer last season, Dwight Gale, who got 23 league goals, relatively unproven in the Premier League, given opportunities in the past that the likes of Palace didn't really take them. And then when you look at the alternate options they've got to him, it's Iozzi Perez and help me out here. Uh, Mitrovic is there. Mitrovic, thank you very much, the Serbian forward. And I think between those three, um, my worry for <laughs> Newcastle is I just don't know if they've got enough goals in them in terms of just their raw strike force. And that's going to be something that uh, it may become a complete non-issue. But I think if there's going to be a problem Newcastle will have this year, it's going to be really kind of creating and scoring goal scoring opportunities. And you look at the players they brought in, Players like Jacob Murphy and Atsu, players who haven't played that much in the Premier League. Well, in Murphy's case, he was playing for Coventry less than two years ago uh, in League One. It's really going to be interesting to see how these players adapt. I'll ask you, Jack, and I don't want to put you in a difficult position, but I'm, I'm genuinely interested. You mentioned at the start there that Newcastle have got Premier League quality players. Is there three or four that jump out? I mean, Shelby, for me, I would say, I would say is, is a Premier League player. There Matt, Matt Ritchie. I mean, Matt Ritchie, well, Matt Ritchie, maybe, but that's a funny one with Matt Ritchie, isn't it? Went to Bournemouth, kept them up, and then went back down to the Championship to play for, for Rafa at Newcastle. You've just questioned the strike force there, which I don't think I disagree with any of it. I think Dwight Gale could be the next Cameron Jerome if he's not careful. And so so who else are you looking at there and you're saying, do you know what, they are... Premier League quality. I'm not. I'm not saying there aren't there. I'm just interested to see who you think. I think the Sellers last year was a very, very impressive player for them. He had some really good performances as a centre back area. Obviously, he's a player who's not really had a chance in the Premier League before. I was going to say he's a good he, Championship he, he, player. He was, but... he was tipped to get a Premier League move. He left obviously Forest to go to Newcastle. He's played at England youth levels and done very well. Mm. Um, I think, as Kido mentioned, Matt Ritchie. I think Mbemba's not a bad centre back to be honest. I think he's still relatively young. Um, you know, he was playing in the Premier League last time they were there. I think yeah. beyond them, uh, I think Rob Elliott actually in goal, as odd as it might sound, is going to be quite an important player for them in terms of well, Darlow. Having... Darlow is their number one. Yeah, uh, but I think in terms of yeah, having experience, player. sorry, because it is a relatively young squad, actually, when you look at the, the Newcastle side. There are a lot of players kind of in their uh, early to mid-20s. Um, Kieran Clark's obviously had chances before. I think defensively, is this, yeah, so I think, is cruel I, I back. Think Clark by the way, will be a good one. I don't, I don't. I'm sorry. This is this is bad research. Is cruel back? I'm not sure. I don't know either. I've not checked it. I want to check. No, Darlow played. Didn't they for, sell him? All of us I want to say was, they sold him. He was out on loan at AZ. But I, yeah. I, I do wonder if Tim Cruel is back. Newcastle fans will definitely know. And I'm sorry that we don't know that. I'm just interested because he is Newcastle back. Was... I've not heard a lot about him though. Like, has he been played in pre-season? Do we know? I, I don't know. I feel like. The, this is this is one thing uh, that I, I didn't think we'd be talking about. Oh I'll be no no no! He's joined Ajax on a season. Did he join? Ajax? Was that last year? No, that was year? before. That was before. Oh, no one. Where, where, where is Tim? Where is Tim Cruel? What a, what an excellent question. <laughs> question to Newcastle fans. He is isn't it? well on his Twitter profile. It says he's a goalkeeper of Newcastle United. So we'll assume he's still there. Whether he starts for them this season, I mean, he's, he tweeted on the sixth of July. Twelfth uh, preseason started at Newcastle. New season, new targets. Hard work continues. So I don't know if that means he's sticking around. Well, that'd be interesting because he's a, he's obviously a player. I've not got too many, but he's a player with lots of Premier League experience. I guess we'll have to wait and see. 
There you are, New- Newcastle. I feel, I feel like there's a lot of unproven quantities in the Newcastle side. It's going to be interesting to see how they get on this year. Yeah, that's just that's why I asked you, essentially. Uh, Keen, any more to say on Newcastle before we move on? How do you think they'll do? Yeah, no, I, th- I think we've summed it up pretty well. I think 15th or 14th right. it will be a decent season for them. Fair enough. Uh, let's move on then to two newcomers to the Premier, uh, Premier League. Neither side, I don't think, have ever been in the Premier League before. Huddersfield are one of three teams to win the Brit- uh, English top division three years in a row. But they did do it in the 1920s. Thanks, Jack. <laughs> that's the day there for you. We, we'd sit on that for 18 teams. He's finally pulled it out as soon as we thought, we thought about the two of them. Uh, we're actually going to start with Brighton, Jack, who largely threw away, boys, the, uh, the the championship last season. They were leading it for a long time. They started their first 18 games unbeaten in the championship. I mean, it's pretty impressive, isn't it? I've got to be honest, for a long while, like Chris Heaton, of course, their manager, he was at Norwich. I've always been quite vocal until a few years ago when I feel like he really started to find his feet as a manager. I've always kind of criticised him even during his time at Newcastle as being someone who was a great coach but lacked the balls to make decisions as a manager from the touchline. Oh. And I, I think he, at, at Brighton he's kind of found a club that he's been able to grow at as a manager. Obviously he's still relatively young as far as managers go. Mm. And uh, there's been a project at Brighton. Um, they had some really emphatic results last year. They scored a lot of goals, I think. As you said, they, they should have won the league. They didn't. Was that a little bit of naivety? I think for them, it didn't really matter. You know, once you're in the Premier League, you're in great stead. And whilst they've not spent kind of massive money like on individual players, some of the leader, perhaps how the likes of Huddersfield and Newcastle have spent in similar situations... They kind of just brought in lots of really smart little transfers, I feel like. And Matt Ryan in goal stands out to me uh, as being just a great sign for them, who I'm kind of excited to see how he kind of adapts to Premier League football. Yeah, from Valencia. They've, sw- they've, brought, like, they've swapped him, of course, out for Stockdale, who they let go, who is probably the best keeper in the Yeah, he's gone to, to Birmingham, year. hasn't he? Uh, is, it, is it said, is it said, is it, they've, they've brought him from Ingolstadt, they've brought in Pascal, is it said Gross? It's got like yeah, a weird Pascal B Gross. shape, but I think the B is yeah. like the B shape. It's a double S, that's a double, double S. S. Anyway, he's yeah. coming from Ingolstadt. Uh, Marcus Suter, Sutner, even, has come in again from Ingolstadt. Two players from Ingolstadt, interesting. Um, Matthias who Norman. Were re- who were relegated from the Bundesliga last year. Yeah, so they've, well, they've picked so. up a few players now. As Jack mentioned, Matthew Ryan from Valencia has come in. Uh, today they sent Davy Proper, as we record this, uh, from PSV Eindhoven. He was, he's been quite hotly rated at PSV for a while, so that's, a, that's an interesting little transfer. Uh, and aside from that, Stephen Alzate from Nato Orient, who's a, an attacking player. Izzy Brown as well from Chelsea. Oh, yeah, on loan, of course, for the season. Who I've also played against. Have you? And how did it, well, we were all wondering at Keno, how did you get on against him? I think we won that game. It was a district game. District game. Sort of county or district game, yeah. Because yeah, he's from, yeah, obviously, Peterborough. originally played for the Albion uh, at their academy, so he's from Minor of the Woods. Yeah, it was, it was born in Peterborough, for those interested, is he brown? Um, but no, do we think, I mean, Keno, you've been quite vocal. We'll start with you then. You don't think Brighton will be staying up this season? You think bottom, 19th, which one? I just... I look at the signings that, and I, d- I don't want this to come across as sounding sort of, um, oh, you need to be buying Premier League experience bit, bit to be able to. <laughs> sort of, well, it's not like that. It's more sort of Soccer Saturday, Paul Merson type criticism of this. But I think there's a, there is definitely a place, particularly in a team that they don't have a lot of Premier League experience in that squad. They've got quite a few exciting players and I'll be interested to see how players like um, Skalag and Sonny March do and obviously Knockout, um, who sort of, did he play in the Premier League with Leicester? But yeah, hasn't really had a chance. To Not a lot. If he did. Himself. No, um, and, and I think the signings that they brought in, obviously the the two players from England start. I think I agree. I think Matt Ryan's a good signing. Um, the two players are we calling him Matt Ryan? Have ever really ever heard it said Matthew Ryan? Are we going Matt I'm Ryan. Just, I'm going to call him Matty. Matty Ryan. The rest of the, no, just, oh, Ma- just Matty. Aussie, isn't it? Just it's Matty. Matthew, for the rest Matthew, of the season. Matthew Ryan, Matty. might. I don't know. I might pull out the Australian accent if he does well this season. Uh, <laughs> I, but yeah, I, I presume they've they've scouted the two Ingolstadt players extensively. I would hope so. Sort of Jesus. Filling filling a role, <laughs> but they they got they got relegated from the Bundesliga. I think it, it will remains to be seen how much Brown will play. Um, and so the signings that they made just don't seem to me like they they are sort of str- You know, if you look at as you say, we could probably get onto Huddersfield and some others later, and and even teams slightly above them, mm. signings that will immediately strengthen their squad and, and give them a chance of definitely staying in the league. I don't see it with those. Maybe they will work out well, but to me, and this, I have experience of looking at signings like this. It reminds me a little bit of quite a few signings that the Villa made two years ago. Um, players like John Vertu and 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 Idris Gay and people like that who 
were untested in the league. And that's yeah. fine if you've got a few of those and they are also in combination with the experience that you need to bring in. But they have just gone all in on those kinds of players. So yeah. I do worry for Brighton in terms of their acquisitions. Brighton and Huddersfield are in a similar situation to Bournemouth not so long ago where they're not a name. There won't be team or players from foreign teams that are looking at Brighton and Huddersfield going, yeah, I really want to play for them one day. The Premier League is the attraction for the players that join Brighton and Huddersfield, you would assume. Maybe the chance to work with Wagner at Huddersfield, who's... who's Got a growing reputation, and I guess you would probably you'd likely say the same for Houghton. Um, mm. I will touch on that. You, you're not a massive fan of, well, I say a massive fan, you just aren't sure they'll do a Premier League level, which is probably fair. I don't know how you feel about it, Jack. Glenn Murray, who was the top goal scorer last year for Brighton with 20 plus goals. And, and the reason I don't think that's as much of an issue, I, again, I'll come to your opinions on Murray in a moment, is that the goals they had around him last year, you had Sam Bullock getting 11, Hamed got 11 as well. You mentioned Knockhart, yeah. 15 goals, 8 assists for Knockhart, and, and Murray was a benefactor of that hugely last season they've got goal scorers in their side and that's always the criticism of teams that go up that if their goal if their goal scorer is not scoring there's nobody really scoring and that's always the thing that's thrown at them so do, do we think they've got enough firepower around them we'll start with Kino and then we'll come to you Jack if that's right I think the trio of Hamed Knockart and um, Murray could work quite well you're not, you're not, but you're not convinced by Murray no, but I, I, yeah, I've never really been convinced by Murray because I think in in the championship he's excellent because what's required of a forward in the championship to score the amount of goals that he did is is a totally different proposition to I think what a what a centre forward needs to do in the Premier League. They need to have a lot more sort of facets to their game. I think you can't get away with having a sort of one dimensional poacher. I think anymore in the Premier League, particularly mm. with the players that teams around them now can bring in um, with the money. So. I, it remains to be seen. You made a good case of the fact that there are goals around him and maybe if he scores 10 goals, say, you know, half as many as he did last year, yeah. they might be able to make that up in other areas. Because I think Knockout especially was the best player in Britain outside of the Premier League last year. Um, and so it'll be really interesting to see how he gets on. And I hope that he does sort of show the form that he showed in the Championship. Um, but I think a centre forward would have been the place... I would have, you know, even someone like Tammy Abraham or well, yeah. one of those players. It's like interesting because there are players moving around in that position. Apart from Izzy Brown, they've not actually brought in like a forward of note. To be fair, no. the guy from Lane Orient, but that's it. Jack Brighton, then, do you th- again? I come to you the same thing with the firepower defensively. They, were, they had the best record in the, in the Championship last year with Newcastle. So I think that's not an area that Chris Hewitt, and It's interesting that he's brought in a, a couple of fullbacks. Uh, Josh Kerr came in from Celtic as well. I forgot to mention that earlier. Do, do you think there's enough firepower in this Brighton team? I think there is, and I think the reason there might be enough is just because they've got a lot of plan Bs. So they've got Akpom, who they brought in halfway through last season. He didn't mm. actually score in 10 games in the Championship, but he's a player who certainly a few years ago at Arsenal was tearing apart kind of the Premier League Reserve League. I think he's the kind of player that, you know, could be a plan B. And we've seen it over the last few years. There are these emergence of players who they've been at bigger kind of top four teams in the Premier League, never really kind of made a splash and suddenly they get, you know, double figures in a season. I put kind of King in that bracket for Bournemouth almost last year. I feel like most people wouldn't have backed him to get 15 goals last year. Um, and they've got great creativity. I think for a player like Nyoka, the fact they've managed to keep hold of him is good. I do wonder if that's something where, you know, come January, if he's played well, they could lose him and that could be... A similar, yeah, similar, okay. similar to Snodgrass and Hull, I guess you would say. Exactly, yeah, that would be a very good parallel to draw there. Um, I, 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 for Brighton, I feel like defensively they're quite solid. I just, I'm not convinced they've got enough quality anywhere to be really competitive. I wonder if it's one of those situations where the directors are kind of looking at it, thinking we can't afford to invest too big. We're very much, we're, we're hoping for the best, but we're planning for the worst in the sense that. In terms of the infrastructure, we're not going to risk it spending crazy money. Well, going in with the attitude mm. of let's see how we got on. If we go straight back down, you know, we've got the parachute payment. That gives us a platform to build off. And Brighton, they're a club, obviously, great new, newish stadium. It's not brand new at this point, of course. Solid infrastructure. But they're not a team who, are, as we mentioned right at the beginning, they're not like Newcastle, where they are a Premier League mainstay. They are a club who are going to be punching above their weight. That said... I just got this weird feeling, and I don't. I don't think this will happen. You're, you're, so you're just you, Europe. You're just you turning on those no, last no, like, two no. minutes. I, I have this weird feeling they might have a bit of a Wigan in them. So you know that season where Wigan first came up with Paul Jewell as manager, and they like finished top half, despite right. like having Jason Roberts playing up top for them. 
So you think he's okay? I, I, so I just Jack, wonder. Jack thinks sixth. Jack thinks Brighton will no, be sixth. I, I, I just Old, think it could Old. happen. I think it could happen. <laughs> <laughs> you think it could happen? I mean, Jack, it, Jack, it could happen. Uh, uh, well, I think it could. I, Leicester won the league. It's it's true. True. Anything could I, happen these days. Jack. I mean, I feel like I'm. I'm I, I, I think they're going to struggle this year. But by the same token, <laughs> well, if they win good. their first five games or get you know fail to lose in their first five Stop games, it. they could do really, Jack, okay, really listen, Jack has bravely said they can finish in the bottom fifteen. So we'll see where they do. <laughs> they'll, they'll, be, they'll be in there somewhere. They'll be in the bottom fifteen. What somewhere, I mean is, viewers. I think if they have a good start to the season, they'll do well. If they start badly, it could right, be a yes. long season. I'm, I'm interested to see how Lewis Dunk and Bruno do. Bruno's thirty six now. He's got a one year extension. Might be his final year. He's been an absolute pivotal part of Chris Hewitt's side. Um, to look look out for him this season, and against, uh, alongside Lewis Dunk, who's a lot of talks about Lewis Dunk. I think he's at that age now where if he has a good year, he could be sort of the next Michael Keane in that regard. Had a few Premier League sides sniffing around over the last yeah. three or he's four pl- years. He's, so. he's played for Brighton f- since he was a kid, I think. So he's been around a long time. Um, Twenty five now, though, will be looking to have an impact on the league and hopefully maybe stay th- in there, whether that's with I Brighton or not, I don't know. Just, just quickly on, on to wrap this one up on Brighton, I think Jack mentioned there that the signings look as though. Um, you could maybe see Brighton going down, taking the parachute payment, rebuilding and coming back up. For a team like Brighton, there's no shame in doing that. And we've seen Burnley oh, do I, that with great success. I want to talk, I don't think I, I want that... to talk about that. That is becoming a risk. If you look at the sides in the in the championship now, there are five or six sides that have done that and are all mm. and are all ready to bounce back and put up a fight to, to get out of that league. That, that is becoming... We might see a flip, actually, that teams no longer play for the parachute payments and, and play to stay in the league, but actually realise that, do you know what, we don't have to just play for these parachute payments, we need to stay in this league first time of asking. QPR have come down recently, Norwich have come down recently, uh, Fulham as well are another one, Aston Villa have come down recently, Sunderland will be in that now, Hull will be in that now, the, Middlesbrough. The thing, the thing like, is, though, I don't think that's they, can be afford, a test. they can't afford to take the risk of the Premier League. But do you, want to, be a, but do you want to be a Premier League club or do you want to become part of this... There's, 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 there's going to be a divide soon in the championship where there's going to be like a top 10 of teams that have gone down, got these parachute payments and are now settled in the championship but, without having I to worry about that. Do you want to be, a, do you want to be a Portsmouth or do you want to be a Burnley? I mean, you can run them badly, but for me, if you're a Brighton team, you can probably afford to spend more money than this. I'm, I'm not like, I'm not in charge of Brighton's financials, so I don't know how it works for them. But we've seen teams that have come down and then can never get quite back up again. Teams that are going to struggle. And there's there's lots of teams in the championship right now that that's going to be the case for. One of the teams I just mentioned, QPR, um, Cardiff, I think are probably another one, Norwich, Villa, I, I, Middlesbrough, some of them won't be going up this season. And then they're in kind of this yo-yo situation well, where they can't get out again. And Brighton will be at risk of doing that. Huddersfield, you like to say, will be the same. I guess the counter-argument to that is there are other examples of teams who have been completely wrecked by overspending beyond their means in the Premier League and then failing to adapt. You look at a team like Bolton Wanderers and the financial fair play. Yeah, but this was, this, that now. was years ago, though. You look at Blackburn. But the thing is, they are clubs who took a risk and overspent uh, and well, for, now they're arguably, in the trouble. Arguably, they, I, I, I actually I refute well, that. I what think about that, Wigan? I think those, those teams, well, I would say for all those teams, actually what happened was they underspent. And they tried to play this game of if we go down to the Championship, then we'll just use the money from the parachute payments and go straight back up again. None of the the teams you mentioned there, Bolton, Blackburn, and Wigan. None of them spent big. They all took the risk, and they all and they, look where they all they all are now. None of. I really think it depends on the circumstances of the team because I'm playing devil's advocate, but I, I think it's interesting to look at both sides of it. It's easy, there, it's think, easy to say they'll get, they'll be in the Premier League for a year and they'll be fine. And that's that's not circumstantial, happens. and it depends on expectations and also the size of the club. There is there are clubs as you mentioned in that, like like us and and maybe Borough and those who are probably have bigger revenue streams than a team like Brighton traditionally um, that can afford to spend big for a few seasons of the championship so the parachute payment isn't as important. And also, like as we just mentioned with Newcastle earlier in the show, if they come back up, are expected by the by you know the media, the fans, to, to automatically retain their status in the Premier League. I don't think Brighton fans particularly will be so... Um, hell bent on staying in the Premier League come what may I think it's okay for them um, to to if if it does happen I don't think it will be the end of the world for them as it would be for Newcastle say if they went back down that would mm. be sort of you know the the end of times and I don't know what would happen Mike Ashley would blow up St James's Park but <laughs> Yeah, it, like I think part of us all want Brighton, to see that. I think so. you've been watching yeah. too much Dream Team. You know, when Don Brighton Barker drove the playoff bus into the Harchester United s- bus and it blew up. Literally never seen it. I've never seen Dream Team. What? No? 
Never? No. No. What? Uh, he's young. So I watch it after this. He's young, to be fair. Uh, I, guess, I guess what I'm comparing them to is we saw Bournemouth come up not too long ago, spent money on Tyrone Mings, Max Gradle, Benekophobi, spent about like 30, 40 million, and now they're safely in the Premier League. I like, yeah. I just think there's there's arguments for and against. Burnley are a good example of a team that did go down, came back up, survived the, the, the next time they were there. But I think it's a it's a dangerous little game, and I'd be sad to see Brighton take that sort of risk essentially. And I think I think it is more of a risk than spending the extra bit of money and trying to survive. Speaking of teams that have spent that extra little bit of money, um, Huddersfield have gone out and spent about fifty million. That they've certainly not brought fifty million in, but they've they've spent about that. On a, a number of players, Kachunga's come in from Ingolstadt. Ingolstadt have been raided by, the, by these, uh, these, <laughs> these really front side. Uh, Deporte, I'm not sure how you said that's probably wrong. I'm really sorry. Uh, Porto striker, I've recognised him for manager actually. Uh, Aaron Moy, who's a youngster that's been signed from Manchester City. Tom Ince well, he from Derby. Well, he signed because he was there. He was on loan, of course, year. last season with them. Excellent for that um, last year, Aaron Moy. Steve Mooney, I think you said it like that. Steve Mooney from Montpellier. Danny Williams from Reading has also signed central midfielder. Scott Malone, left back from Fulham. And Matthias Jorgensen, signing of the season right there <clears> from uh, from. Copenhagen. Jack, you'll certainly be familiar with him because he's a football manager Hall of Famer, essentially, in my opinion anyway. I think he's he's, he's six foot something or other of, of beautiful. I'm looking forward to seeing how he does. Do you know what I mean, Jack? 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 Oh, God. That's who I've lost. He's gone. Are we, are we, <laughs> right. He will never know this has been put into the podcast. Going for a pee, don't come to me at Ben, for, at ben on Discord. So he's, not, so he's gone to the toilet. I just saw that. Well. To, sorry, Jack, I didn't see it, mate. Apologies. He's gone, he's gone, he's gone to the toilet. Uh, <laughs> that's amazing. What a lovely moment. He's got to do some more research on, on Huddersfield. Well, Kino, we'll carry on without him. Oh, yeah, uh, let's, let's do they it. They also brought Casey Palmer in from Chelsea and uh, Jonas Lozl from Mainz I think, as well. I feel like every team has bought a Chelsea player this window. 20, every team 25 loans Europe. they've got Chelsea this year. 25 loans. Yeah. Um, but David <laughs> Wagner impressed a lot of people last season. The back end of Huddersfield's yeah. year wasn't the best. They almost didn't get into the playoffs, although it looks certain for a long time that they would. Uh, last 10 games, I think they lost six of them or something. They knew they were in the playoffs but couldn't catch Brighton and Newcastle. So foot off the gas was well and truly. On the beach, I think is the phrase we like to use. Uh, it was certainly yes, the case. Of course it is. I, the way we've just been talking about Brighton, and we can apply a lot of the things we've just said to the, the Huddersfield squad, I just think there's a little bit more about the Huddersfield squad than there necessarily was about, or there necessarily is about the Brighton team. I just think I agree, some of the additions they've made, someone like Naki Wells, who I'm expecting to have a decent year, you bring in Tom Ince, who's got a, there's, there's players they've brought that, again, have got a point to prove, and that's the sort of transfer I quite like to see from, a, from an Udi Brighton side, by lots of players with a point to prove. Um, we've seen that happen in recent years as well. Like the Southampton, Norwich did it quite successfully for a few seasons. And I feel like Huddersfield have followed that mould. Under the leadership of Wagner, I think can have... A, they're, they're my team out of the two, out of Brighton and Huddersfield, which I think most people are tipping to go down, to stay up more than the other. Um, yeah, I agree with that. I just think neither will. I think, I think the to. issue with Huddersfield is the style of play they played last year is not easily going to be translatable to the Premier yeah. League. No, didn't, didn't have that's a, a very didn't have a natural goal scorer, and that's something that they've clearly gone out in this window and thought, Jesus, we need to get in a couple of strikers. Naki Wells last year, I think it was less than 15. Uh, Kachunga got a few, but they need more. And that is this, this, for, for Huddersfield, they are the classic, a team that come up without a striker never seem to stay up. Um, Jack, how do you see Huddersfield's season going? I really like Huddersfield. I've been to a few away days. They're fantastic pies. It's not why I asked you if the hospitality was good. <laughs> I was saying the, the pies in Huddersfield Town's football game. I love him, Mrs. We've got a whole year of this. Well, you throw a question to Jack and he gives you a completely different answer than the question you asked. How will they do? Well, I like Huddersfield. You know, I've been before. It's got some lovely accommodation. Well, I, I, I wanted to say some nice stuff before I then shot oh, them down no. brutally against okay. the wall. Go on, go on then. I think they're going to struggle. Okay. Like badly struggle. Controversial uh, statements from like, Jack Peachman. I'm thinking less than 30 points. <laughs> less than 20th, I thought he was going to say. Less than th- well, I went last year, I said that Hull would finish with less than eight. Do you want to be bold? Make no, a prediction my, that there? is my bold. What, less than 30 points? Yeah. Jack, considering some of the predictions that we heard you give on this show, that is not bold. That is not bold. Come on, put your neck out. How many points? They'll get 28. 28? I mean, that's... The, oh. I'm disappointed in you, Jack. I thought, I thought you'd give me more than that. Right, 28. I didn't want enough. to go to de- below 30, but I've gone to 28. I've pushed okay. the boat out. Okay, well, <laughs> you pushed push the boat out, he says. Okay, then. Well, 
with the additions, is, is there anyone that stands out for you, Jack, that they've brought in that you think will actually make a big difference to their side? That Mane from Montpellier, uh, 11.4 million. We mentioned the fact they've got a need for a striker. It looks as if he's going to be the guy. Uh, 22 years of age, had a, had a decent year last year. Uh, in, in League One, 14 goals in 35. Is he the next Olivier Giroud? That's the question. Or Dibriel Cissé? I mean, to us, the part I'm most excited to see in this team, which might seem like an odd one, is Tom Ince. Well, no, no, I, think, I think a lot of people, there's been a lot, an odd lot of question yeah. marks over Tom Ince. He, he, was, he was that player, of course, kind of emerged with Matt Phillips. You know, they were kind of Blackpool's kind of young, dynamic wingers. Obviously, Phillips had a very good season last year at West Brom. I think he surprised quite a few people with his performances he gave. Yeah. And I think for yeah. Tom Ince, he's kind of been craving that chance to play in the, the Premier League. Obviously, he's loitered around a few teams who are kind of high-end championship teams who would have very much been expecting to get promotions. And I imagine, in his ideal world, world he would have kind of gone up with a team. As it kind of turns out, that hasn't happened. But, uh, you know, he is a player with some talent. And clearly, Huddersfield think that he's a man who can really kind of give them some, I guess, dynamic play out wide. Yeah, Hull signed him, of course, for the Premier League. We played seven games, didn't really have much impact yeah. in the league. Mm. Uh, has then done really well at Derby. 11, 11, 12, 13 are the goals he's got uh, in, in succession. This is now a huge season for Tom Ince. Again, we, we've talked about it for a few players. This is a huge season for Tom Ince. He's got to put in the performances of a Premier League player. He's no longer a kind of young He's, 20, he's 25, you know. This is, this yeah, is the point for this kind of player that it's either you're going to get a move to a big club in, in these sort of four... Or you're back to Derby. Yeah, or, you, or you're back in the championship with Derby. And, and nobody wants to be back in the championship with Derby. Look at Will Hughes. He's gone as well. Um, do we, Jack, I last year I kind of answered a moment ago, I think Huddersfield have got a better chance than Brighton. Where do you see Huddersfield finishing? I know you said bottom half. Do you think Brighton will get more or less than that? Well, sorry, point-wise. Point-wise, do, th- do you think Huddersfield are finishing bottom with 28 points? Yeah, I do. Do you? So you, you think Brighton are more equipped? I mean, they scrape by the pass. I read a really interesting article and I want to tweet from the For The Fans account if I can find it, but it was funny, did a statistical analysis of teams that go up from the championship and based on you know how good the defensive records are in the championship, their goal yeah. scoring records, and all this different stuff. I think it's important to remember, this Huddersfield side actually got into the playoffs with negative goal difference. Like, yeah. it was, and I, yes, they've strengthened their team. Yes, they've spent some big money. I've just got this. I feel like it's one of those situations where last year they kind of fell a little bit off the pace towards the end. Obviously, they got absolutely stuffed in a few games, which is why they ended up with negative goal difference. And I, My fear is they've tried to bring in a lot of players who they think can really have an impact. In reality, not many of them have played in the Premier League before, and they're mm. going to have to adapt quickly, and they're going to have to gel with the players who already exist. And that combined with what I think is going to be a real struggle for Huddersfield in terms of their style of play that they played last year, you know, that very... Um, kind of pressing style I just and kind of really it's a very fluid system they played it was very unusual for a championship team to play it yeah. I, I just don't know if they are going to be able to do that in the Premier League given the quality of the oppositions and I think it's going I to think, be down yeah. in a lot of ways um, to how they adapt we talked a bit about Deitch being quite stubborn in his ways away from home I feel like the Huddersfield it's critical that they realise that away from home they've got to play completely differently this coming season yeah I think the business that Huddersfield, as I said, as we started this this segment, I think the business that Huddersfield have done is probably better on paper than Brighton's. I think, but but in terms of the squads that they have and the prospects for this year, I think both of them are very similar. I don't know if I'd be able to separate really who would outperform the other. I think they're in both quite similar positions. So, yeah, pretty much spot on what Jack just said there. I agree with that. I think looking at the Huddersfield team, you... (laughs) I, I think they'll actually do okay. I, I don't think there'll be. I don't think there'll be many games where they get torn apart. I just think no. they're going to be a bit unlucky in a lot of games, yeah. and that might be the problem for them. And it might not be bad luck, but there may just just a bit of quality, just that little of, bit of quality, yeah, and, and a little bit of naivety might pop in, and you know they might not be able to hold to a lead. Yeah, that kind it, of thing. it looks like a team that you see it. You see so many teams do this, and it's yeah. almost like. Huddersfield, don't do not do it. But when they sign a striker from a foreign league that scored over 10 goals and he comes to the Premier League as the big hope of let's this is going to be the guy. He'll keep us in the division. He scores three goals and you don't see him ever again. And I worry that that will happen to Huddersfield. Uh, worth mentioning as well, Danny Ward was superb for them last year. I could be, They've not kept was, him. It was, was, was a key point of getting them promoted. And Saved the penalty that sent them up. Yeah. And, well, got them to the playoff final. And Liverpool have kept him as their, as, their, as their third choice. I think him and Carrius will like battle it out behind Mignolet um, 
for the, for the second choice, and they've, they've obviously had to get in a new keeper because of that. And that is something else that you want consistency going up, I think, especially in defensive areas. Interestingly, Brighton and Huddersfield have both had to make that move and bring in someone else or rely on a keeper that's already there. I don't actually know, actually. I've, I've, oh, so they've brought in the mains keeper, I think, Jonas Lossel, who's going to be their guy, 28-year-old Danish Mainz. keeper. Does I have Mainz? What did I say? Mainz. Is it Mainz? Is it Mainz? Do, you prefer, do you prefer Mainz? Mainz, yeah. Sorry about it's that. Fine. No, it's fine. No, no, I feel it's awful. Fine. Callum um, Keane, they, connoisseur of German football, of course. They've brought him in. The interesting yeah. part about that, though, and I'm, this, is not, this is because I've got such a vast knowledge of Danish football, uh, I can I can tell you this that he and Jorgensen played together at uh, Michelin for for a few years. If I'm not mistaken, God, wow, yeah, That's so a so they will definitely know each other. And while there isn't going to be that consistency throughout their side, that is one particular area where they'll know each other very well. So there you go. Mm. Enjoy that little bit of Danish knowledge. Enjoy it, everyone. I think. I'm quite excited to see Wagner in, in the, the league as well because, as you say, he's, he's Klopp's very best man, Kino. Quite literally, Klopp's best man at his wedding. So was he really? Yes. I didn't know that. I, I didn't realise he was. At his wedding. So it's surprising Danny Ward doesn't mean allowed to go back, to be honest. Yeah, it is. But, uh, um, but yeah, I, I think if, if, if he needs a bit of advice from anyone, he can just ask. He can. He can just ask you. And, and, and I think, yeah, I think what he may show as well in terms of his managerial skills, even if Huddersfield do go down. I feel like he may be able to show enough from this team mm. to possibly net him a Premier League jog in the future. We'll see. Maybe. Just when, uh, well, let's, let's complete the, the whole thing, shall we? When Marco, Silva, when Marco Silva gets that job at Spurs because Pochettino has gone to AC Milan after, uh, after thing he's gone to Inter, that's the point in which Wagner gets his move to Watford and goes there for a couple of years. I think mm. that's it. And, that, and that completes football, everyone. Uh, that is going to bring us to the end, though, of our Premier League previews. Uh, completes the podcast. And it completes it? the podcast. We'll be back, of course, uh, the, uh, the week after the weekend's football action. Uh, some big games coming up, folks, this week. Is there only one in particular you're looking forward to? I've thrown that on you. You had literally no idea Lester what's going to do. Leicester v Arsenal on a Friday. Leicester v Arsenal. Yeah. Oh, I need to work out how I feel about Friday. Like, I didn't yeah. know for the few Friday games I had last year, but the season starting on a Friday. Mm. At the Emirates, there's some, some interesting games, isn't there? Brighton at home to West, uh, against Man City. That is a baptism, a baptism of fire, isn't it? My God. <laughs> yeah. Good, good luck with that one, boys. <clears throat> uh, also, United at home to West Ham on Sunday. I think that'll yes. be an interesting one as well. Considering what we've said about United and, and West Ham as well. Uh, that'll be a fun one yeah, to watch. Yeah, equally, uh, before that, Super Sunday, as Sky would put it, uh, Newcastle at home to Spurs. Of course, Newcastle's last game in the Premier League, they beat Spurs 5-1. Can you it, bloody... That was, that was a weird result. Can you bloody it, imagine really? if that happens again? Uh, that is going to wrap things up then, folks. How do you see the Premier League table going? Let us know in the comment section down below. I'm excited! And Kino, Kino's buzzing for a league that his team's not in. And uh, we're going to be... <laughs> we're going to with you. Harsh, every yeah. step. Oh, you said they would get into the playoffs last season. You got that wrong, didn't you? Um... You said they would get into the playoffs last season, season even, though they didn't. What I'm getting at is, folks, the Premier I've League... I've already booked the open top box. Good, excellent. The, the Premier League is almost here, and we are excited for it. Me, Proudy, Kino and Jack will be with you every step of the way this season, so keep an eye out on iTunes, on YouTube, on Twitter, at For The Fan Show, youtube.com slash For The Fan Show, and ForTheFanShow.com, of course, for Subscribe all the links. Subscribe on iTunes. Subscribe on iTunes and check out the Fantasy League as well. Get involved. You've not got long left. There is a link in the description of the YouTube video, as well as the pinned tweet on our Twitter profile. So... That brings us to the end. Jack, thank you for joining me for the previews. Thank you for having me for the previews. I can't wait until the World Cup ones in less than a year's time. Oh, those will be exciting. Kino, pleasure as always, my friend. See ya. And we will see you again. We love with care from us at For The Fans. Goodbye.